All right, so you want to take a stab at doing a mix in Atmos inside of Logic Pro. So what do we have to do exactly inside of Logic to get it set up in order to do an Atmos mix? It's actually dead simple and there's only a few things that we have to do. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to duplicate our session. And this is actually the most important part. So assuming you've already done your stereo mix and now you want to make an Atmos version of it, you want to keep the stereo mix and the Atmos mix as separate sessions. So there's three ways we can go about doing this. So the first way we'd go about this actually involves the most amount of work. So what you'd want to do for this approach is to bounce your session out into various stems. So maybe you do a bounce of your stereo drums as a stem, guitars as another stem, so on and so forth. Then you create a brand new Logic session, labeling it the Atmos mix, and then just drag all the stems into a new Logic session. The second way we can go about this is to simply find our Logic session in the Finder, simply make a copy of that session file, rename it, and then just open that session. And then the third and the easiest way to go about this would just be to simply have the stereo session open and then just create a new project alternative and just label it as the Atmos mix. Now, once you've gone ahead and done any of those three things, there's only a couple settings inside of Logic that we need to change and then we can start mixing in Atmos. So let's take a quick dive in the computer and I'll show you what we got to do. All right, so with our new Logic session open, the first thing we have to do is go up to Logic, go to Preferences, and then go to Audio. Now what we need to do first is change the IO buffer size. Doing a mix in Atmos is a lot more CPU intensive than doing a stereo mix, so we want to set this up to 124. Or 1024, that would make more sense. Having a higher buffer will allow us to mix in Atmos without completely crushing our CPU. So select 124 and then just hit apply. And now the second thing that we need to do is we need to go up to file, we need to go to project settings, and we need to go to audio. And then from here, see where it says spatial audio? We just need to select that and select Dolby Atmos. Window's gonna come up telling you that the project's gonna be converted, so just click OK. And we're done with this, so we can close that. Now, if we head down to our master bus, we're gonna see this new Atmos plugin. So let's open this up. Now, this is where we would select our monitoring format. So if you're mixing on headphones, you would use either the Apple renderer or the Dolby renderer. Now there's a difference with these two. When you're monitoring with the Apple renderer, this is how your mix is gonna sound if you're playing it through iTunes or through Apple Music. When using the Dolby renderer, this is how it's gonna sound when it's played on another streaming service like uh, Amazon or Tidal. And then if you're gonna be mixing through monitors, you would just select the monitor setup that you have. And those are all the settings that we need to change in Logic. So now you can start mixing. So that's all that you need to do to start mixing in Atmos inside of Logic. We'll start going deeper down the rabbit hole in future videos, but for now, this will at least get you started. And hopefully you found this video helpful. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, just leave them down below. Just want to thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Mr. Jeff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So take it easy.